Well, welcome, folks. It's good to have you with us today. It's, I'm Pastor Dave from Valley View Baptist Church in uh, North Ogden, Utah. Uh, today, we continue with another message on prayer, and I've been using this statement these weeks as we fight this uh, virus and, and, and that, and just to recognize that that God is our exceeding abundantly able God, which we read from Ephesians 3, 20 and 21. And also I'm emphasizing that, you know, what faith does. And I'll talk a little bit about faith a little later on in my message, but faith defeats fear. Faith defeats stress. Faith defeats anxiety. Faith defeats discouragement. And yes, God's still in the miracle business. He's still on his throne. He's still all-knowing, all-powerful, everywhere present at the same time. This I would just share with you to kind of get our thoughts on our amazing God as we talk about the different things in Scripture and offer words of, of encouragement and words of invitation uh, to, to you folks. So let's just have... Uh, a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, as we come before you on this day, we acknowledge you, yes, as the one and only God, the God in three persons, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, blessed Trinity. And yes, Lord, we need you, we lean on you, we depend on you. And yes, Lord, we honor you, we worship you in truth. We worship you in spirit and we pray to you and we seek your will and your guidance and your wisdom. And yes, Lord, this, this whole world has gone through some pretty traumatic things the last six months. And I think most of the world was not prepared uh, for this. And so, Lord, we, we call upon you and ask, Lord, that you would just kill the virus that's killing so many people. I want to offer our prayer, Lord of thanksgiving, first of all to you. You are an awesome God. You're there for us. And Lord, I want to pray for those folks that, that are the first responders, those doctors and nurses that are right in the trenches, and Lord, uh, saving lives, risking their own lives. And yes, Lord, I, I pray for our, also our police and our firemen and our military that's, that's just there for us, and guarding us, protecting us. We pray your blessing on them. And let, yes, Lord, let us have a deeper love and appreciation uh, for, our, for our first responders, and I thank you for them. And I ask, Heavenly Father, as I pray for the body of Christ throughout the world, I pray, Heavenly Father, that there be a strengthening of the faith I pray, Heavenly Father, that there be a renewed interest in our families that will be bound together even more so. And so, Heavenly Father, and I pray for this message that it go forth in the power of the Holy Spirit and be received in that same power. Lord, and I pray that this message will help folks, Lord, that encourage them and uplift them. And so, it's all in your hands. Lord, it's your, your time, your message, your will, your blessing in every way. And we pray sincerely in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, folks, uh, you know, we've, we kind of try to start with a note or two on prayer. And I have one that I would share with you uh, the, the, today. And it's uh, Oswald Chamber has written and it's been quoted, quoted by David Jeremiah in his uh, prayer, The Great Adventure. Oswald Chamber has written, it's not so true that prayer changes things as that prayer changes me, and then I change things. Consequently, we must not ask God to do what he has created us to do. For instance, Jesus Christ is not a social reformer. He came to alter us first, and if there is any social reform uh, to be done on earth, we must do it. 
Chambers believed that prayer alters a man on the inside, alters his mind and his attitude to things. The point of praying is not that we get things from God, but that we learn by prayer to detect the difference between God's order and God's permissive will. God's order is no pain, no sickness, no devil, no war, no sin. His permissive will is all these things. What a man needs to do is to get hold of God's order in the kingdom on the inside, and then he will begin to see, to handle the riddle of the universe on the outside. Do you need to discover how to handle the riddle, riddle on the, of the universe? Then you will make it a priority to learn to pray, thy will be done. So I wanted to share that with you as we uh, continue with a a few thoughts. You know, last week we, we shared that prayer must be offered according to the divine order. And we discussed sincerity, humility, and repentance. I continue with these Uh, requirements uh, today to talk to you first then uh, about uh, obedience. Our whole personality must move in the direction of our prayers. It is not what you say and what you pray, it's what you are and fain would be. God knows the intent of the heart and feels your importunity. And so obedience to the requirements of the divine order will must, must be uh, from the heart. And I want to share a scripture in Deuteronomy. Uh, sometimes I think some of the awesome uh, verses and chapters in Deuteronomy are, are overlooked, but we, we can get an awful lot of blessing uh, from that. So I want to read Deuteronomy 11 uh, verses 13 uh, through 16. And it shall come to pass, if ye shall hearken diligently unto my commandments, which I command you this day, to love the Lord your God, and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul, that I will give you the rain of your land in in his due season, the first rain and the latter rain, that thou mayest gather in thy corn and thy wine and thine oil, and I will send grass in thy fields for thy cattle, that thou mayest eat and be full. Wow, isn't that amazing? We have here the land, the gift, and the people that we can really uh, emphasize, and it's It's conditional if you hearken diligently. So uh, undo his commandments. And so I just uh, encourage you to uh, just read that whole whole chapter. It it talks a lot about warnings and exhortations and uh, and, uh, shows the Lord's love and what he's willing willing to do. So I wanted to, to share that. With you, and then over in Romans six seventeen, it said, "But God be thanked that you were the servants of sin, but you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was uh, delivered you." Even in uh, Romans, there where Paul, I believe, was speaking uh, to to the people, and then uh, down in Romans six sixteen, just a verse. Uh, in front of 617. Know ye not that to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. And so, uh, Scripture's talking about a choice there, folks. A choice. We have a choice to go the sinful way or go the righteous way. And I think obedience to the righteousness of God, obedience based on some of the things we, we've been uh, talking about, tells us that we have an awesome choice available 
to us. And so the essential to true prayer is also a test of lordship, which I believe that Romans 6.16 shares that with us very clearly. God answers the prayer of those who know, obey, and keep his commands. If we go over to John uh, 14, uh, 14 and, well, I'm going to read 13 through 15 in John 14. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments. You see, that's a choice. Loving him, keeping his commandments, then we can pray and see results of that, of that prayer. And so in 1 John uh, 3.22 says, And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do these things that are pleasing in his sight. You see? You see, folks, what God's laying out for us? Keep his commandments. Be obedient to him. Love him. And respect him. And, and have an attitude of, of honoring and glorifying him. And we'll see some changes in our prayer life. We'll pray differently and we'll receive graciously uh, from, from our, our Lord. So we have the Lord's example uh, in this matter over in John 8, 29. It says, And he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I do all always those things that pleases him. Even Jesus Christ set that awesome example for us. He was sharing with the world in, in this passage of Scripture in John hey, I'm, I'm loving my heavenly Father. I do everything for him that he wants me to do. I'm loyal to him, you see? And that's just the example that we need to be to both Jesus Christ and, and our heavenly Father. And so it's, it's most interesting that, that obedience is, is one of the uh, orders of of, I think, effectual, fervent uh, prayer. And then the next word I'd like to share with you is the word faith. I could go on and on and on about faith. I remember some years ago I, I did a series on faith and I think ended up with 20-some messages on, on uh, faith. But we know that without faith, It is not only impossible to please God, but also to gain anything from him. There must be unshaken faith in his love, his wisdom, and his power. I'll read to you Mark 11, uh, 22 through uh, uh, 26. It's called the prayer of faith in Schofield's uh, Bible beginning in verse 22 of Mark 11. And Jesus answering saith unto them, Have faith in God, for verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. And when ye stand praying, forgive, if you have aught against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. But if ye do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespass. You see? how he has tied both faith and forgiveness together because I want to talk in a few minutes about about, uh, uh, forgiveness. And then I quoted possibly a part of uh, Hebrews 11.6. 
But without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently uh, seek him. That's pretty, pretty awesome. And so uh, James 1, uh, 6 and 7, uh, read that to you. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of, of the Lord. Well, that's where the rubber hits the road, isn't it, folks? Just puts it right out. You know, we have to, we have to exercise faith to get wisdom. We have to exercise faith in our love for the Lord to receive uh, from, uh, from him. And so it's pretty amazing. All of our Lord's illustration enforcing the value of believing prayer. And we, in Mark 11, uh, uh, 23, which uh, we, we just finished reading, it's important for us uh, to do this. The seeming paradox must be taken along with this and understand in the light of, of God's and our Lord's general teaching. The need of faith is further illustrated in God, in Christ's attitude to those seeking his, his aid. And in Matthew 8, 13, it says, And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, and as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed in the selfsame hour. You see, faithful prayer, believing prayer, and Christ performed uh, a miracle right there. Over in Mark 5, 36, it says, And soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he saith unto the ruler of the synagogue, be not afraid, only believe. You see, he's encouraging a prayer of faith, a prayer of believing. And so it's a, and in Luke 8, uh, 48, it says, And he said unto them, Daughter, he said unto her, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace. Another miracle based on faithful prayers. You know, folks, sometimes I think that, and me included, that we pray and we, we have doubt about him answering our prayer. And all of these scriptures that I've been sharing with you, it just says that's defeating your purpose. You need to believe him. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. Wow. We must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. What reward? It's a blessing in our walk with the Lord. It's a blessing in his answering our prayer. It's a blessing in our interceding for others. Oh, folks, it is, it's, so, it's so awesome. I just want to encourage you so much to, to just make these applications in, in, our, in our faith. I have a, just a few little kind of one-liners that I'd share with you today about, about faith. I picked them out of a book that I, that I have of illustrations. It says, God makes a promise, faith believes it, hope anticipates it, patience quietly awaits it. That's, see that's faith and believes and hope and patience all wrapped up in that umbrella of, of faith. Another one, both faith and fear Sail into the harbor of your mind, but only faith should be allowed to anchor. And so we'll have these thoughts of fear. Don't let them linger in your mind, in your heart. Get rid of them. Let faith anchor your soul. There's a song that 
used to sing years ago, I've anchored my soul in the haven of rest. And that's what we need to do. Every time we talk to the Lord in prayer, let's, let's just have our faith anchored into that prayer. Another thought, faith helps us walk fearlessly, run confidently, confidently and live victoriously. Isn't that amazing? Faith helps us walk fearlessly, run com, convince, con, excuse me, conventionally, and live victoriously. And then feed your faith and your doubts will starve to death. Another great thought about faith. And then faith gives us the courage to face the present with confidence and the future with expectancy. Isn't that awesome? These are things that we need to really implant in our very, our very soul. And the greatness of our fear shows us the littleness of our faith. And so we need to just reverse that then, shouldn't we? The greatness of our faith shows us the littleness of our fears. And so I just wanted to share share those as we think about the uh, obedience and prayer and and uh, uh, the faith in our prayer time. I, I'm striving to approach God with these items that I've talked to you about. And I'll tell you, since I've been studying these these last few weeks, my time with the Lord has been more blessed because I've learned really to say, Lord, what can I do for you today? You guide me, you give me the strength, the wisdom, the knowledge uh, to do it. Just, I just want to please you. You remember the illustration about the lady that took the cookies into uh, uh, President Lincoln and, and, and he asked what, he, what she could do f- for him and she said, nothing. I just wanted to bring you some cookies. And he said, first time anyone's ever come into my office and to give me something and not ask or expect something. So, you know, when we talk to the Lord, let's, let's just take our willingness to him and ask him what we can do for him at this point in, in time. And in these difficult days, folks, he'll, he'll give you some things to do. Bless. And so, yes, and then I mentioned uh, previously that I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, forgiveness. And so I, I would uh, want to share a few thoughts uh, there. So our Lord was very emphatic about a personal heart condition as as necessary to acceptable communion with God. He warned against expecting forgiveness from God if we harbor an unforgiving spirit toward others. We read in Matthew 6, uh, 14 and 15, For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father Forgive your trespasses. You see what the Lord is is saying? We don't have time in our life to hold grudges and, and have an unforgiving spirit. Look how many times we've gone to the Lord and asked forgiveness. I ask forgiveness each day. I ask the Lord in the mornings when I wake up, Lord, forgive me of my sins but tell me what you want me to do for you today. So forgive me and use me. And he does. He does. And so it's important for us to to realize this. Forgiveness of others is often the crucial test in our spiritual experience. Such a test text exposes the weakness of humanity. To forgive is divine, we've often heard. It's also the climax of our Christian obligation to forgive even 
our enemies. You know, I think if we just would take and take a list of those that folks that were not uh, forgiving them and just make a list and say, Lord, I forgive these people. And if it's necessary for you to speak to that person, speak to that person. Come with a clean heart to God. That's what he's saying. I, I just want you. I, I don't want you to come with an unforgiving spirit. Remember what he's done for you and for me. Pretty awesome when we stop to, to think about it. And you know, I, I often use this little phrase about things that, that God has provided. And some folks have real sorrow and difficulty, but I say, God never has to say, oops. You know, he doesn't. He's, he's planned things out. He's an awesome God, all-knowing, all-powerful, everywhere present at, at the same uh, time. And so, as we forgive, we show ourselves to be the children of our Heavenly Father. In Matthew 5, uh, 22 uh, through uh, and 26, I'm going to read 21 uh, through uh, 26 because I think it's, it's important. You have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother, without a cause, shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there rememberest that thy brother hath aught against thee, leave, it, leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. First, be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. Agree with thine adversary quickly, while thou art in the way with him lest at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and thou be cast into prison. Verily I say unto thee, thou shalt by no means come out thence, till thou hast paid the uttermost farthing. Well, there's just a challenge there, my friends, to have a forgiving spirit. And oft times we have something against somebody and that person doesn't even know it. And their life has gone on fine and yet we're in turmoil in our, in our very hearts uh, because we have an unforgiving spirit. So let's just lay those all out on the table and let God take care of them uh, uh, for us. And so uh, there's other uh, scriptures, Matthew 5, 44 and 45. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven, for he maketh his Son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the the unjust, Matthew 5, 44 and uh, 40, 45. And so, yes, uh, we reach the pinnacle of Christ's likeness when we forgive. Further, we're enjoined not only to forgive our enemies, but to love them. Without love, all other virtues are valueless. And I would refer you, I won't take the time to read, but uh, to you today, the 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians called the love, love chapter. Just, just take that, folks, and, uh, and uh, read it. Well, I just feel led to, to open my Bible and read it to you. It's a powerful, powerful message there. Let's go over to 1, 1 Corinthians 13 and share with you uh, this awesome, awesome chapter, chapter uh, 
13. You notice in the Bible, if you, if you look at the uh, uh, chapters 11, it talks about the Lord's Supper, how that we need to be right with God and right with our fellow man to take the Lord's Supper. And then chapter 12 talks about the gifts of, of the Spirit, and, and that's an awesome uh, chapter. And then he goes and talks about the Christian being a member of the body of Christ. We're the bride of Christ. And then in chapter 13 of 1 Corinthians, it's, it's an awesome, awesome chapter. It's not long. As I share it, think about God's love for you and what he's done for us throughout the ages. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You know, I'm a whosoever. I hope you're a whosoever. If you're not, you can be by just asking the Lord to forgive you your sins and acknowledge you're a sinner and ask him to come into your heart and be your savior, and he will. So let's, re let's read together then 1 Corinthians 13. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tingling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. Even the power to remove mountains, and I hope I have a few moments maybe to share what the Lord really means about removing mountains. Think of the mountains in our life that has been hard to climb, and we'll talk about uh, that. He's not talking about asking a particular mountain to crumble. He's talking about the mountains in our life that are hindering our walk with him, and he'll crush them out. He'll crush them out. In verse 3, And though I bestow all my goods and feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up. Doth not behave itself unseemingly. Seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked. Thinketh no evil. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a, dark, through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know, even as also I am known. And now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. The word love is... Uh, what the word charity uh, defines uh, for us. Well, I wasn't going to take the time to read that, but the Lord seemed to say to, to do that. You know, the Lord loves you. The Lord loves you uh, so, so much. Well, uh, another thing, and I won't spend a lot of time on it, it's the word fasting. We need to consider fasting at times. Uh, being appropriate for times of solitude and sorrow Fasting naturally becomes associated uh, with, with, uh, with prayer. So I would just pass that along uh, uh, to you. We don't go out and beat our chest and say, oh, I'm fasting for the Lord. I think fasting is, is when we quietly talk to God about something and we just forget a meal. We just spend time in conversation 
in solitude and sincerity uh, with with our Lord. Uh, so uh, Tennyson, uh, Mary's fasting uh, to praying in the line in this line, fast and pray that so perchance the vision may be seen by thee and those and all the world be healed. So there's power, folks, and and uh, in fasting and and uh, and praying. So now I want to talk about another word while I have a, a few more moments, and that's the word persistence. Jesus taught that God hears importunate prayer. The whole point of the parable of the friend coming at midnight, begging bread, is that of persistency. And so I'll read to you uh, from Luke chapter 11, uh, verses 5 through 10. And he said unto them, Which of you shall have a friend, and shall go unto him at midnight, and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine in his journey to come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not, the door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed, I cannot rise and give thee. I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity he will rise and give him as many as he needeth. And I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that seeketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Some years ago, folks, I had a family in our church, and, and there was a lot of, of uh, problems in that in that family, and I remember being called over to that family on many occasions at any given time in the middle of the night. I didn't, I never rejected getting in my car and going over to that, to that home. They needed help. They needed to be in tune with God. They needed my counsel. They needed God's, God's presence, and so, Yes, uh, one might not call it persistent, but uh, they were persistently in trouble and in difficulty in, in the family, and, and they called on me. On one occasion, the police were there, and, and uh, I went in and, and settled down a situation, and the, and the police officer, uh, we stepped outside, and he said, I just want you to know how much it meant to me and to my fellow officers that you would come in the middle of the night. He says, because we've been here before and it was pretty, pretty dramatic, but you calmed the seas. And I says, you know, that's just the Holy Spirit uh, working through me. What a blessing that was. And so, yes, folks, we need to be uh, uh, persistent and uh, if I could just read uh, one more uh, uh, parable, a parable of the unjust judge in Luke 18, verses 1 through, through 8, saying, And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint, saying, There was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came un, unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while. But afterwards he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest my continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith, and shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I'll tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. He left that as 
uh, a question mark. And so, my friends, we need to be persistent in our prayer. And there's a great difference between uh, persistence and repetition. Persistence comes from the heart. And let's remember, remember that. And so, uh, and I guess I'd kind of like to maybe finish up uh, with Ephesians 6, 18. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. You see, he's challenging the body of Christ to look out for the body, for the body of, of Christ. And so we need more perseverance in prayer. We must ask until 70 times seven. How often have we prayed and then said to our heart, what's the use of praying? There's no sign of change in the wayward life so dear to me. No deliverance from my own failure or perplexities. But we must pray on, wrestling like Jacob, panting like David, hoping like Elijah, persistent like Bar Bartimaeus and the Cy Syrophoenician woman, crying with tears like our blessed Lord, that's, that's, how we, that's how we learn. And so we need to pray in one will. I mentioned that. We need to pray in the divine name. We need to pray in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So to kind of re recap our message I would of last week and this week, we must have in our life sincerity, humility, obedience, faith, forgiveness, persistence, and calling on our divine name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. It'll help our prayer life. So as I close, I will share this, this poem with you. It's called The Ministry of Prayer. There's a holy high vocation needing workers everywhere. Tis the highest form of service Tis the ministry of prayer. None need stand idly longing for a place in which to share. Active service for the master, there's always room in prayer. In these days of tribulation, wickedness pervades the air, and the battle we engage in must be won by fervent prayer. There's no weapon half so mighty as what the intercessors bear. Not a broader field of not a broader field of service than the ministry of prayer. You see, through prayer, we God ministers to us through a prayer of intercession. God handles and re resolves things with us and with the person that we're interceding uh, for. And so, uh, it is the highest form of service is the ministry of prayer. Thank you for being with us today. Let's just have a word of prayer. Yes, Heavenly Father, I apply all of these things that we've talked about. Oh, Lord, I, I just love you. And I thank you. And I want to serve you. I want to be a prayer warrior, Lord, for, for this country, for the world, for those that don't know you, for those that do know you and have drifted and offer words and prayers for encouragement and uplifting and guidance and wisdom. Oh, Father, please accept my prayer, Lord, of love for you, love for my fellow man, love for the body of Christ, love for the Bible, love for the, uh, the scriptures, love for my ministry here at Valley View Baptist Church. I just thank you. And I want to offer my prayer of intercession and the salvation of those that are listening that don't know Jesus. Oh, my friend, you need him and how this world needs him. And so if you've never asked Jesus to be your savior, just a simple prayer of Heavenly Father, forgive me of my sins. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for me. Come into my heart and be my savior and help me to be in the ministry of prayer. Oh, and my dear Christian friends, if you've drifted, oh,
drift back, drift back to the Word, drift back to fellowship, drift back to Jesus. Oh, and thank you, Heavenly Father, for hearing this prayer and meeting these needs. And so I do pray, Lord, that soon that you could just kill this virus. We want to get back in fellowship. I, I want to preach uh, and teach to uh, one-on-one to people, and yet we're so limited in these days, Lord, but persistent in praying and asking, Lord, that you'd clean up the mess that man's made, that we can get back and not be limited in our time and in our work for you and with you. So bless these that are listening, Father, and meet needs. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you, folks, for enduring this message, and I sure uh, thank you for just being with me today. I feel presence from people all over the country, and I, I so appreciate it. I'd love to hear from you if you'd like to drop a note, if the Lord lays on your heart to give a love offering to, to our ministry, we'd appreciate it. Remember, Valley View Baptist Church, Post Office Box 12653, Ogden, Utah, 84412. Thanks so much for being with me. God bless.